Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you what I believe to be the best and most elegant way to implement modern API versioning in your ASP.NET Core APIs. Now I already have a video on how to do this for web APIs and even though it's a bit old, it still stands. The only thing that has changed is actually the name of the package because it moved and you can check that in the description. In this video I'm going to show you how you can do this for minimal APIs which many people think don't support versioning and also show you how you can add Swagger support. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. But before I move on, just a quick reminder that I'm still running my two-day in-person workshop from Zero to Hero Effective Testing in C-Sharp in a bunch of conferences this year. For now, the confirmed ones are NDC London, Days in Romania, NDC Oslo and NDC Porto with NDC Copenhagen and a few others to be announced soon. In those two days, I take you from the basics of unit testing, we go into mutation testing, then we start with integration testing and we end with performance testing. And by the end of it, you have all the right foundation on each respective type of testing to go to your companies and implement them. So speak with your manager and I hope to see you there. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple minimal ABI here, it actually doesn't have anything. And I'm gonna just start by adding two hello world endpoints. So I'm gonna say map get here and I'm gonna say hello here. And I'm gonna say just hello world. Now, by default, as it is, I only have one API version, the version. But what if at some point I say that this hello world endpoint is obsolete, it's deprecated, you should not be using it, we need a v2 of that new endpoint. So at that point, I implement that. Well, if I go ahead and I run this API as it is, then as you can see, it is going to start, but if I go to Postman and try to call that hello endpoint, then it's going to say, hey, I have multiple matched endpoints here, one that is hello and one that is hello, how am I supposed to differentiate which one you want? And usually, historically, what people have done is they've taken it upon themselves to implement how the versioning should work. So, for example, you might have a V1 here and a V2 here. And then at this point, if you run it, then you can say V1 and you can get Hello World 1 and you can say V2 and then you're going to get the V2 here. And that is a valid way of doing versioning, but it can be a bit tedious because you have to keep track of everything. Then I guess what you could do here with the new feature of minimal APIs is map a group and you can have a top level group prefix to be, for example, V1 and then all your V1 endpoints go there and then V2 be a separate thing. But what if you want to have one of the other ways of doing API versioning, for example, URL parameter header or media type, which are all valid. Well, you can, but you have to obviously code it unless you do what I'm going to show you in this video. So we're going to go straight into NuGet over here. I'm going to search for asp.versioning.http. Now that package is effectively third party to a degree, but it was so used and is so good. It was actually absorbed into the .NET organization itself. So it's absolutely fine to use and support it. It's very active as you can see. And I've been personally using it for years. Of course, if you want to support the people working on this project, then go and give it a start on GitHub. I'm going to have a link in the description. So we're going to go ahead and just add this single NuGet package. And now what's amazing about this is how simple the setup is. So all I need to do on the services level is say add API versioning and that's it. And then on the app level, what I need is to define what's called as a version set. So I'm going to say app.new version set or API version set. And then I can use this fluent way of defining the version set. So I'm going to say has API version over here and I can pass down a bunch of things for example an API version type to say for example new API version and I can have that be I don't know 2.0 for example or 2.1 or 1.0 if I want the default one or simply one and then define the minor version as a second parameter is very very flexible I'm just gonna say has API version one here and then I'm gonna say has API version two just to have two of them and then I'm just going to start simply by saying build and now that I have that all I need to do is go here and say with API version set and I'm going to pass down the version set and I'm going to do the same for the other one over here and then I'm going to go ahead and remove this v1 and v2 that I did manually just to show the power of the package so I'm going to say map to API version over here and I'm going to specify the version to be at one because this is the v1 and I'm going to do the same one over here so map the API version two and then say to. And now effectively, that's it. All I need to do here is go ahead and just run my API and I'm going to go back to Postman. And by default, because I haven't defined how I want my API to be versioned, the query string parameter API version is what kicks in. So I have to say API hyphen version equals, and if I say one, 
then I'm getting the hello world one. If I say two, then I'm getting hello world v2. And that's it on the same route. And very importantly, if I don't specify a version, then it's going to go by request. You didn't specify a version. What's going on? And I don't actually have any information here either. That's also important. We're going to solve that because it would be good to know what versions are supported and what versions are deprecated. So let's go ahead and improve on some things. For example, in here, I have an options object in my API versioning, and I can say options dot default API version, and I can specify a default API version. Now, in my case, I'm going to say just API version one over here. And I can also say that assume default version when unspecified. So if I don't specify a version, it's going to fall back to what I defined as the default version. So if I go ahead and I run this, in this case, it will be one. So if I go here and I just run the thing that wasn't working before, then clearly now it is working. It defaults to v1. Now, I still have the problem where the headers don't actually tell me what's supported and what's not in terms of API versions. So I can actually improve on that. I can go ahead here and say in my API version set, report the API versions. And if I go ahead and I run this, then now what I can see here in the responses is API supported versions one and two. That's good. And if I go ahead and I actually add things like point versions as well, and I also add this here and I rerun this, then this will tell me 1.0, 2.0 and so on. It's very, very granular as well if needed. Now, this is a small quick thing. What if you want to get the API version inside the endpoint itself? When if you have the context in here, then you can do something like this. You can say API version equals context dot get requested API version and I can pass it here. So I can say V API version dot, I don't know, to string. Here we go. And I'm going to say this is definitely not null in here. And then if I stop and rerun this, then as you can see over here, it is saying V1 because it is grabbing that from this method over here. So if you need it for some reason in the method, it's here for you. But OK, that is good. But what if you want to use any of those other types of versioning that I talked about, like media type, header or HTTP route parameter? Well, everything is configurable. So by default, what's happening is the options dot API version reader property is actually set to use the query string API version reader. And by the way, those readers implement an interface and you can implement your own interface if you want to and provide your own readers if you want to have customized API versioning. But what if I want to use one of the other types, the HTTP route parameter, the header or the media type? Well, actually, you just provide a different reader and all of them are actually predefined for you. So you can say new header API version reader, for example, and I can say API version to define the header that I want to be read and interpreted as the API version. So the moment I do that and I run this, I can go here and I can say API version 2.0 and I can run this and now I'm getting V2. If I say 1.0, then as you can see, I'm going to get 1.0. If I say 3.0, which is not supported, I'm going to get a, what are you doing there? It's, this is not supported. There is no 3.0 and I'm going to get a bad request instead. Here you go. And since we are in headers territory, there's also a bit of content negotiation that's happening when the client is sending a request to the server. Now, in this case, we have a get request, which wouldn't really have such a content type. If we had a post request, you would, because you're basically telling the client, hey, application.json incoming. But in that example, I'm just going to use it with get to show you the versioning feature. But no, you wouldn't really use it with get. And what is a very common practice is to actually use a semicolon here and say, OK, that's the content type, but also the version is and you would pass the version here. So I would remove it from the traditional header. I'm going to send it over as part of the content type instead. And to implement that, all you need to say is new media type API version reader. And that's it. So if I just send this, it's going to say v2. But if I send v1 here, then it's going to say v1. So that's another way to do this. And the last way is actually the first we showed, which is a URL based parameter. Now, all you need to do here is say new URL segment API version reader. And then you'd have to go to the endpoints and add this indication over here to say that, yeah, my version is coming from this parameter over here. And usually you have a v suffix and then you have the version coming in here. So if I go ahead and I run this as it is, then if I remove the version from the content type, not that I need it, but 
I'm just saying. And then I go ahead and I call it as it is. I'm going to get a 404 because that URL route doesn't exist anymore. But if I say V1, for example, then V1 is coming here. If I say V2, then V2. Ultimately, there is no right or wrong approach. Whichever approach you want to support, you just have to properly document it and communicate it to your users. But now you know how to use basically all of them. Now, I do want to point out at this point that this package is actually very flexible and any sort of small alternation that you might want, for example, if you want to communicate things like deprecated API versions, you can do that with extension methods. You can play around with the documentation. I will have a link in the description. You're going to find everything you need there. But now I'm going to go ahead and remove these parameters from over here because I want to show you how you can implement open API or Swagger support. Now I'm going to roll back to the query string parameter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and first add a new folder over here and call it open API. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new NuGet package called asp.versioning.mvc.api explorers. And we're not going to use any MVC specific feature, but we kind of need it because most of the open API stuff are there. At some point, I do think they might break it up to be an HTTP.API explorer package. But for now, that's what we have. And for this to work, we're going to need to create two classes. The first one is called configure swagger options. And the second one is called swagger default values. Now I'm just going to paste both of these classes and they are coming from the documentation on their website as well. Well, but effectively what they're doing is they're adding all the necessary wiring to make it possible for minimal APIs to have proper versioning support on the front end of Swagger or Open API. And now once we have that, let's go ahead and add all the necessary registration first on our services and then on the middleware. So I do still have, by the way, from when I created this project, the original swashbuckle.aspnet core and the Microsoft.aspnet core.open API packages, which we will be using here. And then I'm going to add three things: the add options API explorer, the add transient for the configure options, and then the i swagger gen to use the new Swagger default values operation filter, which we just added. Once that is in place, I'm going to chain another call in the add API versioning thing over here, defining the group name format. And for example, if you also have things like URL based versioning, then you might want to do something like substitute API version URL and set that to true. But in our case, we don't need that. And then at the bottom, I'm going to add my Swagger related stuff. So I'm just going to paste this here. And this is the same use Swagger and use Swagger uh, UI. But now we configure the options to register the appropriate group names as we register them above. And basically, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and just run this. And then this is what you're going to see in the front end. So now we have all the information we need. We have the hello endpoint. We have the uh, print hello world. And it has the default query string parameter. And we're getting hello world v1. Everything is detected. And now I have the v2 here, which is the same v2 endpoint. But it knows the default value being two over here on the APA parameter. And now we have hello world v2. So everything here is supporting. You can configure things like, OK, this should return 404 or 400 or 200. Everything is configurable, detectable, and wired up. I do believe that this sort of process should be ironed out and everything that we see here should be just added into the original NuGet package or a separate NuGet package and serve to us because having to carry all this around is a bit of a baggage. But other than that, the process is completely frictionless and ultimately the same as it was before because this package, like I said, has been out for a while and the way it was implemented with Web APIs was effectively exactly the same. The only difference was Web API was using attributes here, we're using extension methods. So it's basically very, very similar. But what do you think? Did you know that this was possible in minimal APIs? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.